So our vision is to make it easier to launch software for anybody. The reality right now is that marbleism is best if you already are a bit tech savvy. That doesn't mean that you can't generate a prototype using marbleism with like no coding background, but it's going to be hard to extract like maximum value. If you're looking to turn your text prompts into an application, look no further than marbleism. We have the founder with us today, and we're going to be learning four things. Number one, his background. Two, who is Marbleism for? Three, a demo of the platform. And number four, some of the best use cases using Marbleism. All right, everybody, welcome back. We have a special edition of Build With Me, and we have the pleasure to be with who today? <laughs> I'm Ulrich. I'm the, the founder of uh, of Marbleism, and, um, and yeah, it's good you know that we are that we are on uh, on the podcast because I have my special T-shirts. Hun hungry dogs run faster. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love special it. Special day. <laughs> That's great. Exactly right. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I would love to know um, how you got started with this. Yeah, tell us a little bit about you. Sure. Um, so I learned how to code when I was 12. So throughout my entire life, I created many, many projects, websites, mobile apps, everything, maybe 20 or 25. And um, 24 failed, except the, the last one. So after my uni, I, I created uh, Vauban.io, which was um, an easy way to launch your investment fund, like to launch your, your venture capital fund. And we, we scaled this startup to um, 80 employees and 5 million in, in recurring revenue. Um, so that was pretty good in, in four years. And then we received a, an acquisition offer from Carta, like the, the captable um, company. And, and yeah, we decided to, to take it with my co-founder. So we spent some quality time there. And, uh, and then I wanted to do an, another project, right? Uh, but the thing is that, you know, after 25 projects, you get tired of like setting everything up, you know, like building your front end, your back end, your design system. Like it's a, you know, it's a very tedious work for every project. So I started working with um, Cyril on a, on a generator, essentially an app generator, right? So you can prompt something and it generates already your, your front end, your back end. So you don't have to, to do this again. And um, and yeah, and this became Marbleism that we officially launched in um, in January this year, and uh, and yeah, it's been great so far. We've got forty thousand users on on the platform, um, so yeah, that's um, that's what who we are. <laughs> I love it. Well, no, this is great. And a friend of mine on Twitter, shout out to Dan. He was like, "You've got to see this. You, you you've got to see what they're doing over there." And so that's why I was like, okay, this is this is special. This is something new. This is in our audience. We see a lot of people that are coming from no code or trying to be able mm -hmm. to scale really quickly. So this was a really interesting platform. And in just a little bit, I can't wait to kind of demo and see more about it. Uh, before we get there, could you explain who is this best for? Is it ones that are non-technical, or do you have ones that have to have a technical? Uh, background to utilize this? Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so our vision is to make it easier to launch software for anybody, right? Like that's our dream. The reality right now is that Marbleism is best if you already are a bit tech savvy, right? If you already have a, a technical background and you know how to code or you want to learn how to code. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't generate a prototype using Marbleism with like no coding background, but it's going to be hard to extract like maximum value, right? Because the AI can make mistakes. Um, and, so, and so you need to be a developer to fix some of the issues, right? What, what we say that Marbleism can bring you to the 80 or 90% um, towards like finish line, uh, but then you still need to code a bit for the remaining um, 10%. So right now, I think it's best for people that want to learn how to code or people that already know how to code. That sounds great. And you mentioned that like 10% left, right? <laughs> it was ones that, um, would you say if, if people are just coming to use the platform for the first time, 
what kind of background would they need to know? More HTML, CSS? What do you think the best mixture for ones that use this or utilize this? Yeah. So um, the best background would be JavaScript, right? Um, because everything in the app is done in, in JavaScript. So the front end, the back end, and it's the most popular framework right now, right? You have like many tutorials on, on YouTube um, about how to, to, you know, to build application in, in JavaScript. And what is great about Marbleism is that you get a professional code base so that everything is already set up for you because oftentimes, you know, when you are a beginner, um, you don't know how to um, architecture your, your project, right? You, you don't know what are the best practices in terms of, um, you know, organization of the project or in terms of security. So you are sure using Marbleism that uh, everything is, is structured in a, in a professional way. So actually it's great as well for beginners because they, they get to see, you know, um, a production ready um, code base. Great. These are excellent, excellent, excellent. So... Um, I have tons of other questions, but I think doing a demo and kind of showing off what is possible, I think that would be really good for the audience. Is that all right if we kind of see a demo real quick before we dive into more questions from uh, from the audience and everything like that? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's going to take five minutes, like the entire process. So let's, yeah, let, let's try something. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, so this is a, a project I just generated like uh, right now. So I can show you um, what is it like. So that's a prompt I put. It's basically a, a platform for real estate agent to generate online marketing uh, brochure for, for their property. And... And basically, that was the output. I'm going to go full screen. So it generates first the landing page. So that's a new feature we just added uh, last week, which is pretty cool now because you don't even have to uh, code a landing page. Like it's, you know, automated for you. So transform your real estate marketing. You can see, you know, the, the challenges, how the platform work, uh, some success stories as well, then a pricing plan and the FAQ, etc. And if we go to, to get started, um, so that's the actual like generated application. So with a, you know, login, sign up, then you, you sign in with some test credentials. Um, and that's a property dashboard. So here, you know, you can see all your properties with the number of visits in each um, property. And then you can add a new uh, property here with like you know some basic information about um, the address and then the location and the description. And here you can see some of the properties here. So as you can see, like all the kind of back end front end works, but it's not maybe the best design, right? So that's why it's important to. Um, to work on your app and iterate on your app. So that's the, the workspace here where basically you can prompt the AI to make um, changes. So for example, here, we're gonna, we're gonna ask the AI um, instead of a table listing the properties, I want to display the properties with cards. Um, you can as well upload a, a mock-up if you want to replicate, you know, like maybe you have your design on Figma. So it can, you know, it can replicate an, a pre-existing uh, design. And so here, this is what the AI is planning to do. So you can, you know, check to see if it's good. And if it's good, you, you continue. And then it's going to update the, the code. Um, and what is good as well that you you have access uh you know fully to the to the code editor so here is your code base and you can you know update the the code yourself like you can do you know you can see like what the ai uh has changed okay so okay looks good and, and we're gonna see the results dashboard 
Okay, and here I have some cards instead of tables. And so that's how you kind of iterate on your app, right? Then you, you might ask, oh, I want to see the pictures as well of the property, right? So you can prompt to add the, the pictures and, and so on. So you really are crafting your app with the help of the AI. And if the AI doesn't work, et cetera, you can still you know, go on, on, on the code and mm -hmm. you can code it yourself. Um, and that's actually a, a big feature compared to, let's say, the, the no-code tool, where if you use a no-code tool, it's great to get started. But what happens most of the time is that when you scale, you need to hire a CTO maybe to rewrite you know, the entire code. Um, and so with Marbleism, you own the code. So you can just hire a developer or a CTO, and he can take the code and add new features or, or whatever. So that's our main differentiation, let's say, um, with like a, a no-code um, tool, even though you need to be a developer to, to use it for now. Love it. This is great. Thank you for the demo. Now, as we're looking at, if I'm understanding correctly where I saw the code base and everything, is that, am I seeing like VS Code? What am I seeing? Uh, right it's there? a VS Code Online, yeah, that is integrated okay. in, in our uh, workspace. Okay, awesome. So then uh, developers, most of them have been using that. So they're familiar. They'll be able Correct. to do that. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about the database? What if someone wants to bring like uh, Superbase or other things? They don't, can they bring their own database to integrate with the, with the project? Yeah. So we actually generate um, the data model. And so we include a database as well. So when you, when you, deploy your, your, your application to host it on our server, we take care of everything. So you get, um, we host the front end, the back end, the database, the file storage, like it's an all in one. Um, so you could integrate, for example, Superbase if you wanted, um, but it works, it works better with our own um, database because the AI has more information about, you know, the way we do things, et cetera. So it's gonna work, it's gonna work better although it's still possible to integrate yeah, with um, external um, databases. Sounds great. And um, could you talk about the different use cases that you've seen really take flight here? Are people using this as an MVP before they start you know, raising in VC rounds? Or it, are people using this to bootstrap their business? Could you talk about who it's best for and then maybe one or two examples that really stand out to you? Yeah, one really cool uh, example that uh, I really liked um, was an app to create um, customized candle. So you you take a picture, of, for example, of your of your girlfriend, um, and it's gonna generate a list of ingredients that match your girlfriend's like style or outfit or like you know hair color, etc. And it's gonna have like a customized name as well. So it it, it was really really uh, great to 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 use it and then they ship the list of ingredients you know to a factory to deliver your your personalized candle so i i really like like this um yeah this this application i tested it on um, on one of my dogs it's, it's like a pomeranian and so he created this customized candle like flurry vanilla or something and and it was pretty pretty fun to see so I think the best use case, like right now, are like you know this type of AI apps, and that's what you know people want to do as well. Like I think thirty percent or forty percent of the users want to use AI in their in their apps, um, and um, and then like marketplaces or SaaS, um, it's less it's less usable for like a static website, right? Like a landing page or stuff like that. Although we generate the landing page. It's not really meant for that. I think Webflow, for example, does a really good job at creating landing page. So it's more for like dynamic website, right? Like SaaS application or marketplaces or social networks, like these, these type of things. That's awesome. There is, from what we see in our audience, and I'm glad that you brought up marketplaces, we're seeing a lot of marketplaces. So people are trying to use no code. And I think this might be a great option, but also a paywall where they're selling a subscription to a database or something oh, okay. where they're scraping or some kind of um, constant dynamic information that they're giving access to. Does this also allow you to integrate with Stripe or other payment portals or payment processors to, to be able to do that for SaaS yeah. or micro SaaS? Yeah, exactly. We have a native integration to Stripe. So you just need to put your Stripe API key and then it, um, and then it just works. Um, and then because it's code, you can integrate virtually anything, right? Um, it's just that you need to ask the AI to integrate it or code the integration yourself, but virtually 
you can do whatever you you know you you want with it. I love it. Now there's and it makes sense ones that want to either get better at code or coders in general. Say for instance, there's someone because this is I'm not sure if you saw it. It's big on Twitter right now. People are using Claude and others. They're like, I don't know yeah. any code, and I'm just building this out. How much time, if someone was going to do it? Would they be able to use something like Claude to basically to use a platform like this? Would you suggest it or just just wait a little bit longer? <laughs> wait a little bit. What do you think? So, um, I mean, Claude is great. Like I, I use it and it's fantastic, right? Like the the application you can create, but it only generates like one file, right? So it's so it's not really usable in, in, in production. Like, you know, you need authentication, you need a, you know, a database, like you need a, a bunch of stuff, right? Like in a, in a code base. Um, so as a beginner, if you don't know how to code and you don't want to learn how to code, I would say it's not the right product uh, for you, right? Like I would use a, a no-code app, like it's fantastic, right? What, what you can create with those. Um, if you don't know how to code and you are ready to invest some time like learning how to code, I'd say it's a, it's a great product. Yeah, go for it. Well, we appreciate it. You know, the, in, the main thing about this channel, and we always bring it up, we want to make sure that it's practical for each person to be successful when they use yeah. these tools. We never want to set our community or subscribers up for failure and be like, yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. You can just yeah. go ahead and do it. <laughs> Uh, so I appreciate your honesty. Where do you see the product going? And by the way, I got an email today or yesterday, even you're constantly doing new updates and everything. So I saw some uh, pricing changes. I saw some new things with uh, Next.js. Where do you see Marbleism going in the next six to eight months? Um, I mean, for, for sure, we'll be improving constantly the AI, right? Like the goal is that it, it really works. Um, I think the next big objective for us is to um, is to improve the design of the generated application because as you may you know as you've seen on on the demo, it's it's functional, like it's good, but it doesn't look super good, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. So I think it's it's important, yeah, to to work on the design. So it has like a, each app ha, has like a unique feeling to it, right? And um, or maybe you know that people can design their app on Figma, and then we find a way to convert it to 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 code and and to make it work. I think that's the um, next big objective for for us, and it's uh, yeah, it's not trivial, um, but I think it's important, like because even if we generate functional apps. You know, like the quality now of um, of the application on the market when you launch your SaaS, like people expect a lot, right? Like they expect like a super, you know, clean UI, like great design, etc. So yeah, we need to to raise the bar uh, here. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate taking the time, letting us know about this, and really. Again, this is a great option for, we think, for ones in our community. Make sure there's going to be a link down below to try it out for free. Again, thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> thank you.